Hi, I'm Ryan Thiessen from Thiessen Tillage Equipment and today we're here to talk about the initial setup of the parallel cultivator for your farm. When you first get the parallel cultivator you're going to attach it to your two inch square toolbar and then the first piece of equipment we usually start with setting up on these parallel cultivators is your between row tooling. That's typically going to be something like this A blade or tender plant hose whatever you've ended up using that's going to suit the conditions on your farm. The easiest way to set this up in the barn before you get to the field is to find a flat surface to work on so that you can get your heights approximated up where you have all the tools. So the first thing we want to do is make sure that this handle crank which controls the relative height of the gauge wheel is roughly in the middle of its range. From there, when the A blade is sitting on the floor, you want about half to three quarters of an inch or roughly fingers width of space, so in this case we'd want it a little bit lower of space between the gauge tire and the floor. This will allow your between row tooling to slice just under the soil surface. Then when you're in the field, depending on your conditions, you can either raise or lower this gauge tire to get the A blade to sit lower or higher. In very soft soils, you're going to want to lower the gauge wheel because it's going to sink almost as far into the soil as the A blade, whereas in hard soils, you can raise the gauge wheel to the proper height because the gauge wheel is going to ride right on that hard soil surface with the ablator tender plant hoe slicing just under the soil surface. Part of the next adjustment you would make depending on your soil conditions is with these springs here. These springs control how much down pressure is exerted on the parallel from the toolbar. In this first position it's all gravity until you get up to about here where it just catches the end of the springs. That would be suitable for recently tilled or very light soils. As you go up into harder soils, you'll need to increase the spring pressure on these by raising them to one of the two notches on each side. Each side can be set independently, so if you felt like you wanted to raise the spring to the top one on the left side and not at all on the right side, that'll work just perfectly all the way up until they're both in the highest position providing the most down pressure. Too much down pressure in light soils will force the whole gauge wheel down deep into the soil and may not be desirable. Once you have this part of the cultivator set up and working properly, you're going to want to move on to finger weeders if that's an option you have. In this case, we have finger weeders here on one of these parallel finger clamps. And it slides on this aluminum bar that we have set up as a mini trailing arm that allows for between one and two inches of float for the fingers. The easiest way to set this up will be in the field when you can have an idea of where the cultivator itself is going to be sitting. You'll take your wrench or your socket and you loosen this bolt which allows the finger weeder to slide up and down. You want to set the finger weeder down into the soil and then raise the trailing arm to about half of its stroke length before tightening this again. That will allow it to move a little bit up or a little bit down depending on what the parallel is doing, always maintaining adequate soil pressure for the fingers. For now we're going to push this back up into the up position. For the flotation on the trailing arm, there are three options for how much pressure you can exert on it. When you first get the parallel cultivator, it will come with two different springs. A lighter spring, for really light soils or if you're using the nine inch fingers on very tender crops. This heavier spring, which you would use on medium finger or in slightly harder soils, or if you're in a situation where your soil is very hard 
and you're using the orange or gold fingers. We also supply this 3 8 by 2 and a quarter inch bolt and that is installed where the 4 inch bolt and spring goes and tightens the front of the mod bar tightly up against this plate you can see here. That will restrict the mod bar from floating at all and create a rigid setup here. That's also useful if you end up attaching anything else to this back bar that doesn't require the float that fingers or spring hose would require. On this crank handle, there is a nut down at the bottom. If you find the crank handle is a little bit too loose or too tight, you can slightly tighten or slightly loosen this nut in order to get this handle to just the right amount of drag so it's easy to turn but won't vibrate in circles changing your height. You'll see here I have the A-blade bolted into the back set of the holes on this offset shank. That'll normally be the place you'll attach the A-blades unless you have other tooling on the back here that's going to interfere with it. You want adequate space between the tip of the A-blade and the gauge wheel to prevent trash from building up in here and catching. If you have pretty clean fields and you need the room, there's no reason not to move the A-blade closer to the tire. Also to note, the larger A-blades stick further ahead from the bolts than the smaller ones do. When we come to the middle of the parallel, you'll see these two aluminum mod bars. These come with the parallel but are optional to be installed or not. If you don't have any additional tooling on, you can leave these in the box. But if you end up having something like a cutaway disc, these are an excellent place to attach them. The two that come with it are these shorter ones. But if you have a setup that would require a wider setup, it's really easy to get these additional either 12, 18, or even 24 inch mod bars. And they slide right into the same spot that does. And you can build bigger setups off of this parallel. For something like the cutaway disc, which goes on here like this. You'll be able to adjust the in and out on the cutaway disc either by sliding this clamp or you can loosen the two nuts that held it and move that whole assembly in and out. Whichever one makes the most sense in your application. For the height of the cutaway disc Typically, you want it to be just ever so slightly below that A-blade so that it's cutting and slicing a channel beside the A-blade, which is going to prevent that blade from creating shelves of soil in your crop row that get pushed around. So if you have like a really German, freshly germinated carrot seed, it's not going to sit on this little shelf that gets pushed by the A-blades. And that's a really good application for the cutaway discs. These cutaway discs can actually also be reconfigured by taking that bolt off and flipping them around to throw a little bit of soil into the row as well if you want to do a little bit of, say, shouldering on the carrots to prevent green shouldering. So that's all for now on the basic setup of this parallel. If you have any other questions, please feel free to give Tilmore or myself a call and we'd be more than happy to help. Thanks and have a great day.